Welcome to EduSearch Clinics. This is one of the most important videos that we are going to do in this series because it's going to be a very practical application of the multiple guidelines that have been there on the topic of pancreatic cysting lesions. So if, if you have missed this series, we have discussed the basics, the origin of the cyst, the pancreatic AC9 and the islet of Langerhans. We saw the terminology, how the terms have come about for the cystic neoplasms. We saw a morphological classification, the malignant potential of various lesions and management of common cysts based on the guidelines. We have also had a video on imaging features as well as cyst fluid analysis. And now it is the best time to understand how to apply all this knowledge when a patient walks into your clinic. So when we talk of guidelines on the topic of pancreatic cystic neoplasms, there have been at least 10, if not more, guidelines on this topic. If you see, some of them are from the same group and they have undergone multiple revisions. So like this arrow that shows you the IAP group, the consensus was 2006, which was Sendai, 2012, which was Fukuoka, and then 2017, this was revised. And then in 2023, it is the Kyoto guidelines, okay? When we talk of the European guidelines, it is 2013 and revised in 2018. So when we talk of International Association of Pancreatology or IAP, the most latest guidelines are the Kyoto guidelines. But understand that Fukuoka and Sendai were the guidelines which included both IPMN and MCN, whereas revised Fukuoka included only IPMN and Kyoto is also for only IPMN. So whenever you are applying guidelines and you see those algorithms, you need to understand which cystic lesion the guideline is for. Okay. Then when we talk of the radiology societies, the 2010 and a revision in 2017, this guideline is on incidental pancreatic cysts. Okay. So it does not mention a particular neoplasm. It mentions guideline for incidental pancreatic cysts. Then when we talk of the European guidelines or the AGA and the American guidelines as well as the Hong Kong consensus, these are for all pancreatic cystic neoplasm. So they are not specific to IPMN or MCM. So understand this overview of the guidelines. This is very important because when we quote a particular guideline to give a particular recommendation, you need to understand if that guideline actually has a point for that particular type of pancreatic cyst. When we talk of management based on guidelines, we need to understand what the guidelines recommend for confirming the diagnosis to understand what type of lesion is it. Okay, Then we look at a diagnosis specific management. We also need to know if there is further evaluation required. For example, if a patient has done an ultrasound, does it need a CT? Does it need an MR? Does it need an endoscopic ultrasound? Once you decide if it needs further evaluation and once you have got your evaluation reports, you need to understand if the patient needs surveillance or not and whether the patient needs surgery or surveillance if yes, or both, when to do it, how to do it. And then post-resection surveillance. So these are all the questions that the guidelines can help you answer. And these are basically the questions that you want to answer in order to treat your patients. So when we talk of management based on confirming the diagnosis, the basic guidelines are very clear. Most of the patients will have had an ultrasound. For pancreatic cystic lesions, MRI, MRCP and contrast, a triphasic pancreas protocol is basically what is recommended. What type of lesion is it? The most important thing to understand is whether it's mucinous or non-mucinous because a lot of management options change as we have already seen. Diagnosis specific management, that is no need to get into the details of guidelines if it's a span it's surgery. If it's symptomatic, it's surgery. So regardless of type of cyst, if it's symptomatic, it is surgery. If it's pen, it is surgery. So no in-depth guideline evaluation required. 
for all mucinous lesions, you need further evaluation to identify the high risk and worrisome features. If the patient is asymptomatic, the patient is not high risk and the lesion is less than 2 cm, it is surveillance. So that is something that you are very clear about, right? When it comes to deciding surgery, if high risk features are present, definitely surgery. If worrisome features are present, definitely further evaluation and surgery. Particular indications like main duct IPM and definitely surgery. When we talk of post-resection surveillance, the only case that needs it is IPMN, okay? Because MCN, the remnant pancreas is not at risk. So, this is how you can summarize your management based on guidelines. So, let us go one by one. How to confirm diagnosis? The first point is history, the blood investigations, the imaging, and then you have endoscopy EUS or FNA. Now, how do guidelines help in identifying all these points? You have clinical high risk, that is new onset diabetes, pancreatitis and obstructive jaundice attributable to the cyst. If the patient is symptomatic, there can be pain or there can be compressive symptoms like splenic vein thrombosis, obstructive jaundice and stomach. If the biomarkers are high risk, you know that there can be elevated CA199 and elevated CEA. Then even these patients need surgery. Imaging based high risk we have already seen. So if you have imaging based high risk and worrisome features, you know. We have already seen the cis fluid analysis and you know that if your US and FNA cis fluid analysis has features suggestive of malignancy, your patients are going to need surgery. So for all the four basic points, we have seen the high risk criteria and if the high risk criteria are present, the patient needs surgery. Now, what type of lesion it is, you know, we have already discussed this in our video on cis fluid analysis. The most important point to rule out is whether it's mucinous or non-mucinous. The imaging has six points and the cis fluid analysis we have already seen. When we talk of diagnosis specific management, I already said span, you need surgery. Serous cystic neoplasm, if it's symptomatic, if it's VHL associated or if it's macrocystic, you need surgery. For all others, you can observe. For mucinous neoplasm, the main duct IPMN, you need surgery. The mixed IPMN, you need surgery. And the last part is the two types where there are a lot of guidelines. That is the branch duct IPMN and MCN surgery for high risk and worrisome features. So this is how you can understand these guidelines. So when we talk of managing mucinous neoplasm, the rejection and post-rejection surveillance is required in IPMN and in patients of MCN with high-grade dysplasia or invasive carcinoma. The operative principles are very clear. You have to do a lymphadenectomy, oncologically safe surgery. Additional rejection is not required if it's a low-grade dysplasia on the frozen section of the cut margin. Adjuvant or new adjuvant is based on your extent of disease and the guidelines of BR pancreatic cancer. Pathological result if there is invasive carcinoma, the surveillance is same as the normal PDAC. Non-invasive lesions you have to do every one year or every six months in the presence of a risk factor. So this is basically the post-rejection surveillance, nothing major. However, when we talk of the branch duct IPMN and the mucinous cystic neoplasm management, we have to understand the high risk features and we have already seen a lot of them. There can be clinical high risk features, there can be imaging based high risk features and if any of them are present, the patient should be taken up for surgery. So that is how you have to manage these patients. Now, when we decide for surveillance in low risk branch duct IPMN as well as MCN, the surveillance is given in all the guidelines roughly up to the size of 3 centimeters. Fukuoka suggests that between 2 and 3 centimeter also you can operate these patients, but for most of the guidelines, the American guidelines especially, the size guide is 3 centimeters. For European guidelines, it is 4 centimeters. How do you follow it? You follow it with MRI or EUS, MRI alternate with EUS based on the size criteria. 
So remember that greater than three centimeter in fit patients, the best option is surgery. And that is something that you need to remember so that you don't get confused when you see an article which is purely based on surveillance vis-a-vis -a, -vis a guideline which is based on the entire management from surveillance to surgery. So to summarize, we have already seen confirming the diagnosis, identify the type of lesion, mucinous needs further evaluation, surgery, we have a very specific set of indications and then you do diagnosis specific management and post-rejection surveillance. So I hope that with this summary video, okay, this video where we have practically applied all the guidelines, it becomes very simple now on how to apply which guideline in managing a patient or answering your questions in exams. So we have covered the entire gamut of pancreatic cystic lesions and go through this series one or two times, make your notes and go through the guidelines if you want to understand more details. There are topics like radiomics and proteomics coming up in the cis fluid analysis and the molecular markers, but they are not currently used routinely. The most important points are how you diagnose and how you manage surveillance and surgery. This is our website. I am sure all of you know by now. You can look at the videos that we have been putting there since last four years. Recommended books are also there and our publications are also there. Thank you.